Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. On this channel, we do reactions and we post them every day. Other than just doing reactions, we also do other things. We've got a podcast, we've got a Patreon, and you can find us on social media. Just feel free to check the link, the description box below. You'll find the links there. Other than that, I also do my own personal things. I write from time to time. You can check out my blog on WordPress, and you can find me as Fanny L on Instagram, and just check out the short poems that I write. Um... Yeah, I hope everyone is doing right and a big shout out to everyone that's been watching, engaging with us and subscribing. You guys are the best. So today I'm going to be reacting to letters to, I'll be reacting to Heracles. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. When the Prophet Muhammad at a certain time in his messengership in the Medina sent letters to various rulers and dignitaries throughout the world at the time including the Persian Roman Emperor for example the Pope in Rome Nagus of Abyssinia Macolchus the leader of the Copts in Egypt and one of these letters reached Heraclius. Heraclius was the Roman Emperor at the time and when Heraclius received this letter, he called for his translator and he gathered together some of the Arabs who were there at the time and one of them happened to be Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was a cousin of the Prophet and he was the leader of Mecca and the leader of the pagans at the time and he happened to be in Jerusalem when Heraclius received this letter. He called for his translator who translating Heraclius's question said to them who amongst you is closely related to that man who claims to be a prophet and Abu Sufyan replied I am the nearest relative to him and Heraclius said bring him close to me and make his companions stand behind him Heraclius told his translator to tell Abu Sufyan's companions that he wanted to put some questions to me regarding that man and that if I told a lie they should contradict me so there we are there we're in the court of Heraclius and Heraclius is saying okay you your companions stand behind you and if he tells a lie you must tell me that he's lying now Abu Sufyan said by Allah had I not been afraid that my companions were going to label me a liar I would have not have spoken the truth about the Prophet so the first question Heraclius asked Abu Sufyan was this, what family status has he amongst you? Abu Sufyan replied, he belongs to a noble family amongst us. Then Heraclius asked, has anybody else amongst you ever claimed the same before him? I replied, no. Was any amongst his ancestors a king? Heraclius asked. Again, Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius asked, do the nobles or the poor follow him? Abu Sufyan replied, it is the poor who follow him. And then the Heraclius asked, are his followers increasing or decreasing? Abu Sufyan replied, they are increasing. Then he asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius then said, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim? Again, Abu Sufyan says no. Heraclius says, does he break his truce? Abu Sufyan replied, no. We are at truce with him now, and we don't know what he's going to do in it. And Abu Sufyan said, I could not find opportunity to say anything against the Prophet except that time. Then Heraclius asked, have you ever had a war with him? And he, Abu Sufyan said, yes. What was the outcome of the battles? Well, sometimes we were victorious and sometimes he was victorious. And then Heraclius asked, what does he order you to do? And Abu Sufyan replied, 
He tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with Him and to renounce all that our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste and to keep good relations with our kith and kin. Heraclius asked the translator to convey the following. I asked you about his family and your reply was that he belonged to a very noble family. In fact, all the prophets come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else among you claimed such a thing and your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have suspected this man was following the previous man's statement. Then I asked you whether any of his ancestors was a king and you said no. If you had said yes, I would have thought that this man was trying to take back his kingdom. In other words, use the mantle of prophethood to try and take back the kingdom. Then I asked you if he was ever accused of telling lies before this, before his claim to prophethood. And you said no. And then I wondered, how can a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? How could a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? And then I asked you whether the rich people or the poor people follow him. And you said that the poor people follow him. And so it is with all the prophets. They have always been followed by that type of people. The prophets are always followed by the poor and the weak and the oppressed. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. You said they were increasing and that is the way of true faith until it is complete in all respects. I further asked you if there was anybody who after embracing his religion became displeased and discarded his religion and you said no. In fact, this is the sign of true faith when its delight enters the heart and mixes with them completely. I asked you whether he had ever betrayed. You said no. And so the prophets never betray. I asked you what he ordered you to do and you told me that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything else along with him and forbade you from worshipping idols and told you to pray and to speak the truth and not commit illegal fornication. If what you said is true, he will very soon occupy this place underneath my feet. And I knew it from the scriptures that he was going to appear. But I did not know that he would be from you. And if I could reach him definitely, I would go immediately to meet him. And if I was with him, I would wash his feet. Heraclius then asked for the letter of the prophet, which was delivered by Dia to the governor of Bura, and then it was forwarded to Heraclius to read. And this is what the letter said. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, from Muhammad, the slave of God and his messenger, to Heraclius, the ruler of the Byzantines. Peace be upon him who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam. And if you become a Muslim, you will be safe. And Allah will double your rewards. And if you reject this invitation, you will be committing a sin by misguiding your peasants. O people of the scripture, come to a word common between you and us that we worship none but Allah and that we associate nothing in worship with him and that none of us should take lords besides Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. This is, of course, the translation of a verse of the Quran. And Abu Sufyan added, when Heraclius had finished his speech and had read the letter, there was a great hue and cry in the royal court. And we were turned out of the court. I said to my companions, surely the issue of Ibn Abi Kabsha, and that was a type of derogatory term they used, a nickname they used for the Prophet his affair has become so prominent that even the king of the Byzantines is afraid of him. And then I started to become sure that he would be the conqueror in the near future 
until I embrace Islam. It's my first time coming across such letters and it was really interesting. Uh, I picked up two things that I would like to focus on. The first one was, um, it's the poor that follow him. I mean, we shouldn't be ignorant or adamant to look, to look into what that means. That sentence holds so much weight. It carries a big load with it. The, the second thing was if he chose to be if he chose Islam he would be safe but if he didn't then it meant otherwise I mean in this time and age I know this was a different period but in this time and age if you think about it when you're praying to one God but go by another religion isn't it the same thing as choosing God or in choosing God all in all. I mean, otherwise, this was interesting how someone took time to write to different leaders to tell them about whatever he was telling them and just to see how they would respond. Let me know what you guys think or what you have to say about this. If you've got any other videos about such letters, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to react to them. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video. I'll be reacting to Heracles.